Hey everyone, welcome back. Forget the Incarnon weapons. Toward Incarnon? No, we got a pistol version. Occupore is where it's at. This thing with the new Nightwave augment is an absolute beast. Now keep in mind, this is a theorycraft video. I know a lot of people got irritated at my previous Batacore video. Here's the thing. If you've been doing your Nightwave diligently, you'll be able to grab the Occupore augment tonight on weekly reset. Otherwise, a very small portion of you, those that have never missed a daily since the new Nightwave started, were already able to get the new Oncucore Augment last night. It works literally as I predicted, but since I don't own this Augment today, do keep in mind I'm only trying to simulate its effects. I do have a track record of theorycrafting things in advance, and I mean, all I can really say is I've been right every single time so far, so take it as you will. There really isn't too much to say here. The go-to build I'm going to recommend is a viral heat setup. This is obvious because the augment gives crit chance and status. If you don't use a dot-based build, you're throwing away a lot of the potential from the augment. Yes, you can also use pure corrosive or corrosive heat, which I'll be showing later when we get to the builds, but that's not the most important part of the augment. It's actually the magazine reload. If you've never used the Aki core before, it might seem like a new core, Gaze, or Psychron to you. Extra beams that hit extra enemies. But this is not actually how it works. It's unique because it does not chain off the enemy you shoot. Instead, it spreads beams directly from the weapon itself. And there are two outcomes that arise out of this. One, the beams do not lose damage on more enemies they hit. However, the tendrils arcing beams only have 50% scaling of the damage the original main beam does. Second, because the arcing tendrils go above and around enemies to hit whatever they auto-aim for, punch through is mostly irrelevant on this weapon. Tendrils instantly lock onto the next enemies in range, which is honestly pretty massive as soon as the previous targets die. I would recommend running Runus Extension for the main beam though. Therefore, you do not need to worry about dead bodies blocking shots or being unable to hit enemies further into the crowd. Your tendrils will instantly change targets as you mow the crowd down from front to back. Headshot kills, on the other hand though, are very half acid outside of fodder units at base steel path. So what is the absolute power scaling of this weapon? It's far above base steel path, but it's also not exactly endurance worthy without buffs. This classification is good enough for 99% of the player base, so honestly, you shouldn't really worry too much about how big of a number this weapon will deal. It's an auto-aiming status monster that melts everything in front of it. Also, the lock-on radius does not even need you to hit any enemy with the main beam. It will target anything within 40 degrees of your reticle when tendrils are active. So how exactly do the tendrils work? You get one tendril per enemy you kill on a fresh reload and you start with zero. It caps out at four tendrils and they disappear when you reload. Occupore is also unique in that unlike other reload limited buffs or augments in the game, holster reloading does not remove the tendrils, and this means in the past, using eject magazine and synth set bonuses let you holster reload large amounts of the weapon at once without having to get fresh kills when the tendrils reset. But Sentient Surge now grants you 20% of your total magazine capacity every single time you get a kill. So long as you can kill an enemy in less than 20% of your mag, you basically have an endless mag that never, ever has to reload, and there's 240 crit chance and status to go alongside it. No more holster reload shenanigans, just hold down mouse 1 and kill enemies. Of course, the weapon needs to do enough damage to do this, and that's why I'm here to show you today. I still don't have the augment, but I can tell you exactly how strong the augment is. Let's reference the cookie cutter viral heat build I'm using. The Aki core is base 24% status. This build currently has 57.6% status. The Aki core also has base 16% crit chance. The augment gives 60% per tendril, meaning when maxed out with 4 tendrils, you get plus 240 crit and status. That pushes the final crit chance to 54.4% and status chance to 1152 I already ran the math, but I can tell you that running the augment in this slot versus leaving it empty increases your damage by roughly 3.5 times. Your status chance doubles, meaning you inflict twice the heat procs or double the burn DPS. But your average crit multiplier also goes from 1.44 to 2.51 times. Combining these bonuses together gives the overall 3.5 times damage increase. To simulate this, I've chosen a Rhino Roar build for the Viral Heat DPS and a Loki Invisible Eclipse build for the Corrosive DPS. The Rhino has 322 strength and results in a Roar plus Primed Faction granting 9.98 times damage to the Heat Dots. With just the Prime Faction, you have 2.4 times damage to the Heat Dots. Remember that Roar only double dips on Dots, so while this Rhino buffs the Heat Dots by roughly 10 times, it only buffs the Raw Augment hit by 3.16 times. The performance of this Rhino is very similar to what you get out of the Augment, which has an overall 3.5 times damage increase on the weapon versus an empty slot. 
The other piece of footage on a pure Krosa build was done with Loki Eclipse. Why didn't I use Loki Eclipse for the Viral Heat Showcase? Because I forgot I could snapshot Eclipse buffs by going invisible, until I actually started testing the Krosa build. Anyways, this Loki Eclipse grants up to plus 300% final damage scaling, and I snapshot this in the brightest light with Invis so that I retain the buff until Eclipse or Invis expires. This means I do up to 4 times total damage and is representative of the 3.5 times damage bonus the augment would give again. With regards to which weapon or gain to choose, do not use secondary encumber. Why? Secondary encumber can only proc once per weapon tick. Multi-shot is unique on beams. They don't create extra damage instances. Instead, they boost the damage of a tick on the beam. Therefore, because you don't get extra ticks with multi-shot, encumber does not proc more often with bonus multi-shot on beams, unlike a normal weapon would. Yes, fire rate still lets encumber proc more, but you're missing a huge amount of your procs, since multi-shot doesn't actually apply more ticks for beams. Use Cascadia Flare if you're on a viral heat setup. You have the option to run Deadhead if you're going corrosive, but since the main draw of Akikor is not giving a a flying fuck where you aim, I wouldn't recommend using this and just stick to flare on all builds. It should be pretty obvious by now that this thing absolutely shreds, and unlike the new core, you don't even have to aim at an actual enemy for the tendrils to kill everything. But more importantly, there is one caveat on the weapon. The builds I showed you today use Prime Target Cracker. This is only best in slot if you're using Arcane Velocity on your frame to boost the fire rate of Akikor or using a frame with fire rate buffs. I would recommend doing this because there's no other way to get good fire rate unless to get good fire rate. Anemic and Gunslinger are actually bad mods to slot on Akikor. Not useless, but because Lethal Torn would be better. If you don't use Arcane Velocity, which dilutes your fire rate, then you should be using Lethal Torrent over Prime Target Cracker. Remember that Multishon double dips on beam weapons for status builds. This means Lethal Torrent is giving way more than a plus 60% multi-shot in practice for heat DPS. That's it. I had to use Arcane Pistolier to simulate the magazine refill effect of this weapon in the showcase, but with that augment, it is very easy to maintain a full magazine. I would also recommend bringing a Glaive to accompany your Core. Why? Because you're going to be using your beam to kill everything. That's why you pick Akikor. But beams suck against Acolytes. And it's the only thing that Akikor can't kill. Glade Prime is the perfect counter because of the massive force proc slash killing them off easily. But more importantly, it allows you to bring Combo Fury. Getting any kill with your Glaive triggers this mod. This will make it so that you can reload your Akikor when setting up tendrils to have plus 100% magazine size or a 168 ammo on the Viral Heat build. This is important because now you have an extra 84 ammo to get your first round of kills or whenever you reload so that by the time the buff expires, you're sitting at a maxed out 84 ammo and already 4 tendrils active. It's just a bonus cushion for the augment refilling ammo. Alternatively, you could run Firax Wraith, aka the Incarnon, because not only is it a solid melee, but you can also bring Amalgam Firax body count for plus 45% fire rate on your Akikor. Cheers! If this is your first time watching, feel free to leave a like, or better yet, subscribe. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. 79.5% of you are not subscribed. I'm trying my best to get you new information out always, as soon as possible, like I've been doing with the Duviri update. Stick around if you want to see interesting memes and builds on a nearly daily basis. You don't want to miss out on any of that, do you? That'll be it for this video. Thank you all for watching, and see you all next time.